Welcome to the aftermath of riding a turbo trainer for 27 hours. So the weekend just gone, I did a charity ride, which was riding a double Everest on a turbo trainer to raise money for the NHS, which took me 27 hours in total. Today's video is gonna be dedicated to the aftermath. I'm gonna show you guys what setup I was using, run through my nutrition, how it felt to do, and an opportunity to answer some of your questions. Now, I think three days has gone by, I think, and I'm finally starting to feel a little bit more human. So without further ado, part one, the setup. So this is the corner of the room that the turbo was set up in. As you can see, we just had a laptop perched on a window ledge. Daisy's bike is set up here at the moment because she was doing a bit of Zwift yesterday. She's mounted currently on the Omni Rocker, which a lot of you guys were asking about. This is a rocker plate and I'll insert some footage here. It essentially allows some fore and aft and a bit of rocking movement to your bike. So it feels a little bit more like riding outside. I think this saved me a lot of aches and pains over the course of the challenge. I was running a standard Wahoo kicker, which is bolted down to the rocker plate. The weights are on here to counterbalance the kicker because it's slightly lopsided. You can do that with the inflatable balls as well, just there. Having them at the same pressure and then just adjusting this is a little bit more precise. I then had this unit with even more drinks than the currently there. Just for hydration throughout, it's better than having to go and make them in the kitchen. These have all got a little bit of squash in and a little bit of salt as well. 90% of what you lose through your sweat is sodium, so a pinch of salt is fine for this kind of event. Perhaps you can use electrolyte tabs if you want to, uh, but they're just more expensive. Now, so I wouldn't forget what rep I was on. I was noting them down on this piece of paper. I then had, unfortunately, they're all gone. A box of gels here, which I completely demolished. That's 20, 25 gels. I didn't eat that many energy bars because I was finding it difficult to eat solid food. This is the bike I was using for the challenge, my Filio Zero SLR. Super light, so obviously it was the best choice. Now you'll notice the chain is completely the wrong length because I changed my chain set out for this challenge because I wanted smaller gears. Now this is a 30 inner ring. I didn't really use the outer ring at all. And I've got a 28 on the back. That gearing ratio was still not small enough. I was grinding up the climb a little bit too much, uh, especially when it hit 12% or so. So for the power I was putting out, uh, I could have done with a one-to-one -one ratio for sure. This is my GRX chain set off my gravel bike. And um, because it's Shimano, it all just fits and works. So I took a little bit of adjusting with the mech, but it worked okay. I'm gonna switch my Dura-Ace one back after this. Other than that, my bike setup was exactly the same as being out on the road. Now next to me, I had a spare pile of bib shorts when I was riding and I needed to change. Didn't use chamois cream, I never have, but I did try to change the shorts when they got a bit sweaty because you can't avoid getting sweaty even with a massive fan. Didn't have any pains or problems. I think I attribute it to a good bike fit. Someone pointed out in the comments that my knees were tracking weird and I think after about 20 hours, there's nothing you can do about that. Your legs are just so tired. Your supporting muscles are tired as well and, and there's just nothing you can do. Food. I've, uh, I've had to write a list. Judging by this bin, it was mainly stuff that came out of packets. 20 energy gels, 12 bananas in smoothie form. I just couldn't really get solid food in, so I was relying on smoothies. Two liters of chocolate soy milk. For some reason, that was easy to stomach at night. Four bagels, which I prepared the night before. I actually made about 12 of them, but just couldn't eat them. Some pasta with pesto. It was another attempt at getting some real food in. All I could do was pick at it. I couldn't eat a substantial amount, so it did contribute. It was salty, which was good. A handful of sweets, some salty crisps, loads of Coca-Cola and coffee. I tried to avoid caffeine for the first 12 or so hours, but after that I was kind of steadily taking in caffeine uh, until right at the end when I had one emergency can of Monster Energy right before the last rep, and I was flying after that. And then I crashed monumentally. I was flying for a bit. Now I was chatting to Coach Ken about the nutrition strategy just before, and what we chose is to go for 80 grams of carbohydrates an hour, if I could. That would be covering all of the carbohydrate burned if I was riding in zone two. I was actually riding underneath zone two for a lot of it. So I was overcompensating, which was good, which gave me a little bit of leeway in how much I had to eat. I was focusing on carbs because it's not a multi-day event. It didn't really matter how well I was gonna recover over the next few days because I wasn't gonna be riding. So carbs were king. If you start adding in fats and proteins, it just becomes complicated, uh, harder to digest and starts affecting the way you absorb carbs. So we're sticking to just carbs and it really worked well. So how did the actual ride go? Pretty well. I had enough sleep at the start, so the first three or four reps went pretty smoothly. Then I did start getting tired and it would go in waves. If you speak to anyone who does these ultra style events, they'll tell you the same thing. It does just go in waves. You'll feel really good and then you'll feel really bad. 
and when you're feeling bad, you have to look forward and trust that you will feel better. Now, it didn't get really, really hard until the night. So as soon as the sun went down, that was the biggest struggle. I think your body clock, there's no way of fighting it. Uh, your body knows when it wants to be asleep. So as soon as you're fighting with that, your power goes down, you feel sleepy. No matter how much caffeine you have, it just doesn't really work. So that's 100% the hardest part. By the time it was dark, I'd been riding for a good few hours, maybe 12, and my legs were getting pretty sore. So what I was trying to stay on top on during the break time, because I had 12 minutes of break while the guy descended on his bike on Zwift, that's when I was getting in some rolling. I was using this foam roller, which is uh, quite a nice soft one, just using it to massage the legs down on the floor. Nothing too hard, because I didn't want to do any damage, but just enough to loosen the muscles that were getting tight. And you can feel exactly which ones need to be worked on during that event. You have to just listen to your body, and uh, not go too hard. Every time I missed that, because I was being lazy in between, I would then have a real horrible time trying to get the legs back working again. So hands down, definitely recommend rolling in between if you've got the means to. Unlike doing this kind of challenge outside, when you're indoors, you have all of these home comforts. You've got a nice warm room with a carpet and you can roll away. It's a lot easier than being on the side of a mountain. So make the most of it. Heat was one of the biggest things I was contending with. This is the fan that I've got set up. Pretty standard wind machine you can get from whatever shop sells fans. This wasn't really enough to keep me cool. So I was chatting to Ken about this and he's got a friend who did a study on the cooling of these fans. And it turns out to replicate the cooling effects of riding outside at 30 miles an hour, you need nine of these fans. Nine. That is ridiculous. Nobody's gonna have nine of these in their house. But certainly if I was to do this again, I'd maybe try and get three or four, position them around me, maybe one behind me, maybe one at the side. It'll probably reduce the amount of water that I need to be drinking, because I was drinking a lot of water. At least two bottles an hour, even through the night when it wasn't that hot, because I was already dehydrated from the day. I think I did just about manage to stay on top of it, but seriously, it was a mission. And if you can reduce that stress and uh, constant need to be sipping on a water bottle by just installing some fans, I recommend you do that. Oh, cookies. Well, we've been in quarantine. It means I'm making a batch of cookies a week and I eat 95% of them. Yeah, but you're doing loads of Zwift. <laughs> yeah, I've probably done the most cycling I've ever done. Yeah, so. as many cookies as you want, that's why cycling well, My mum was like, have you been losing weight? And I was like, no, but I've got a balance of not putting on weight. So yeah, I'm so like, not. I'm just not getting any more fat because I'm exercising. So for the last three days, I think it's been three days, I haven't been able to roll my legs at all because they've been so tender. I do wonder how long this whole process is going to take of uh, recovery. So what was I like when I finished the challenge? <laughs> was I a wreck? I don't remember. Well, you finished it and then we realised that you hadn't actually finished it because of the... That's not on the video. You got to the... Everest elevation. There was like a whole five kilometers before that, which is quite hilly up to the Everest and that, uh, sorry, up to Alpe de Zwift. I totally forgot about this. Yeah, and that doesn't count. So then we had to figure out what your 17 reps of Alpe de Zwift was and then minus that. I can't even remember how we worked it out. It was so I don't stressful. Know. We messaged about 20 people at once, didn't but we? But basically, God. we ended up just to be safe because I did the calculation about four different times. So you ended up doing 150 meters more just to be safe. I'm pretty sure you only need to do like 50 meters, but anyway. You're actually surprisingly awake. I think you like napped on the sofa for maybe half an hour and then you're like, should we get a pizza right now? Because we were going to wait till later. Then we got a pizza <laughs> and you still didn't sleep after the pizza. And then you were like, no, I'm not I'm ready to go to bed the yet. Pizza. Then I was like, I think we should like go lie down in bed. And you were like, okay. And then you were like, out. <laughs> But you were fine, and then we slept like really long and we've just been doing the same since, just chill days with lots of sleeping. You recovered pretty well. I know your legs are still sore. I think you did really well. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I definitely felt the last couple of days felt okay and then tried to do stuff, just simple tasks. Like, I don't know, I changed my crank set over today, back to the Dura Ace one, and I just needed to sit down afterwards. That's not normal. Yeah, I might do a small ride tomorrow. It'll be the first time I've been on the bike since. Nice and chill. Uh, we can just do a flat one, can't we? I, I don't need to do anything. That's the nice thing about this lockdown, I guess. I can just relax and take as long as I need to recover. Walking up here is hard. Okay, 
am just back. I want to sign this video off. Uh, but first, I want to point you in the direction to the charity auction of this rocker. So uh, Martin, the guy who owns Omni Rocker, has put this up on eBay. It's the one I actually used. I'm going to sign it because he wants me to. I've never signed anything, so I've got to invent an uh, autograph. All of the profits go to charity. Uh, I believe some of it to the NHS and another and one other charity, which is all in the details in the listing. I'll put a link down below to that. So if you wanted to get your hands on one of these and do your bit to raise some money, it's a great way to do it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys soon.